Today, we're taking a look at one of the most challenging two octave scales to teach on the bass. <laughs> What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and we're continuing our series of two octave major scales for the bass today. This series seems to be taking forever to do on my part. I made a rule when I started, which is that I couldn't go on to the next major scale in my own personal practice until I filmed the video. So I've been stuck on E flat major for, I don't know, it seems like forever. But we're doing the video today, and it is one of those scales that can be challenging, especially when you're starting on the bass, and especially if you don't have an extension. A lot of schools will require that their students do two octave E flat major scale for some sort of test. And that's the highest in register on the bass if we don't have that extension note. And the fingering doesn't map out super neatly on the bass. That's the case with these flat scale keys. Like I've done for all of these scale videos, I've created two fingering options and you can download the fingerings for this as well as all the two octave major scales in the description below. The first option is the simplest one. It uses open strings, stays in the lower positions with the Second one is a template fingering, so it's very similar to the other two octave scales, but maybe a little bit more challenging at first. And then I've got an arpeggio fingering, it's an arpeggio fingering, whatever, but let's dig in. Option one is the simplest, and this is usually what I teach. Now, if you've got an extension like me, you can play the low E flat, and all of a sudden it becomes a relatively easy two octave scale because you end here. Even if you're gonna play it as written here and you go all the way up into the thumb position, I still like to have this open E flat here. That's one of the advantages of these gated extensions. And if you wanna learn more about these, I did a video that I will link up to up here. <laughs> and such a cool device for so many reasons. So highly recommend it if you can make it work in your life. But what this does is all of a sudden now I have an open G string and I have an open E flat string. So all of a sudden, I get this extra resonance that I find nice. So this scale, we just start in half position. So we wanna make sure that we're nice and open with our hand. These notes can be a bit of a reach for people. If you have to do a slight pivot, that is totally cool in this region of the bass. If your setup is not optimal, it can be a little bit challenging to get the strings down here because they're a little bit tighter here and down by the bridge. So if you can, Take your bass in regularly and get it worked on and just make sure that these sort of notes are easy to play. You'll be so thankful <laughs> in life. So we start off in half position here. We got our first few notes here. Now we do two notes grouped, two notes grouped, now three notes. And this is usually the most challenging moment, finding C, D, E flat. What I recommend is we play thumb on G, one on A flat, three on B flat. Now, what can work is to think about replacing third finger with thumb and then one going down on C. So you're not just leaping blindly for C, you're sliding in and finding that. Even with that, it can be a bit challenging, so I recommend also going down and playing it an octave lower just to get it in the ear. And then try it up the octave. And then you have D, E flat. Now, there are many other fingerings you can do. You could do two notes, two notes, two notes. You can do all sorts of things. But I try to group things as we go up the bass into groups of three if possible. It's just a little bit less shifting. Okay, one of those is good. <laughs> Option two. Option 
option two will take you up the D string most of the way, which I find really cool. And this is a very flexible fingering. You could start down here like I have on the video here, but you could also start here. You could start here. The cool thing with a template fingering is that it's just important how many notes you group in a position. So this is two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes, three notes, three notes. So we're doing it here, two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes, three notes, three notes. Now, like I said, we can start here. Two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes, three notes, three notes. Three notes. Or we could start here on the E string. Two, two, two. Three, three, three. I just like that combination. Two notes, two notes, two notes, three notes, three notes, three notes. This arpeggio fingering, they're always challenging to do. I decided to map it on the bass starting on the E string, which I realize can be a little bit weird for some folks. Now, I'm kind of a cheater because I've got this E flat string right now. So I'm just playing E flat harmonic. Ah, but if I don't have that, which it's likely you don't, you just put it down. And it's not probably going to be the loveliest <laughs> note on your bass, a little barnyardy, but I find that if I go one, thumb, two, three. That is a wonderful hand shape to learn on the bass for so many things. So wow, we could probably come up with a slightly easier E flat arpeggio fingering. We could start down here. We can play two notes here. But now we have these three notes. What the heck do we do? That's the challenge. So we could go and then shift, but then we're shifting for just one note. That's why arpeggios are just a little messy on the bass. So I like this fingering. I realize it is a little bit weird to get this first note, but if you can get that, then you can go to thumb. And the way to check that is open G. It, it was likely to take some work to get that in tune. So I can say I missed that. So I'll try it again. Now I missed that one. Oh no. Doing some sort of exercise like that, where you play E flat, go to G, play it down the octave, play it here, then a lot of times you can get it in your ear that will translate over to the hand. It's not the easiest fingering, but it is a fairly logical fingering because once we get to the G, we can just put two, three down just like so, and it works. And again, this is a very useful template to have in your arsenal because you're going to need it for all sorts of different passages on the bass. It's good to get learning it. And since we don't have the luxury of harmonics so much in this key, I find that it works great. As these scales get more flats and more sharps, you might get a little bit more frustrated, especially if you're new to the bass, but take your time, be consistent with your practicing, be persistent a little bit every day will get you to where you want to be with these scales. Practice with a drone, that can be super helpful. Stick with that first option as long as you need to. Take your time in that third octave. Really make sure that you're nice and relaxed in your body as you're playing this. If you enjoyed this video, check out this next one we've got linked up here. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.